Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. We're here, we're back at it again, and we're going to get on into it. But before we do, as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. With that being said, here's a quick word from our sponsors. Organic herbs and botanicals, skin care and edibles, wellness for body and mind. The Brothers Apothecary. Fine teas and remedies. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Again, shout out The Brothers Apothecary. Make sure to click the link below and go check them out. Guarantee you're going to like it. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get on into it. Here is today's guest. Hey, 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 Santavo. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Now, with that being said, y'all, little bit of bad news. Unfortunately, we actually already did the interview, which I guess is the fortunate part, but the cameras didn't record it. It was such a good interview, though. We're going to go ahead and we're going to give you some stills that are going to change a little bit periodically, and then we'll catch up with y'all on video towards the end. But we want y'all to hear it as it happened because it was really good. So go ahead and uh, get ready for that, and we'll be right back. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. How's it going, man? Doing all right. Doing all right. Let's go ahead and get on into it. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, who you are, where you're from, what you do. Give us that, like, Tinder profile of your involvement with music. Okay. Well, I go by Santavos, my artist name. Mm -hmm. And I created a group, Third Eye Goonies, mm -hmm. with my brothers, you know what I'm saying? We've been making music professionally together and started this in 2014. Huh. So we've been at it for a minute, you know, seriously. Yeah, coming up on 10, ten years, years, you know? Damn, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, there's that. There's so, there's nine of us in the group, and we're all so versatile and so different in our own lanes. It's crazy, like, man. Yeah, well, we've had a couple of y'all on already, and I'm looking yes, forward so, to getting to the rest of them at some point. But let's dive into you a little bit more. What got you started with music initially? So, honestly, I've always been a big fan of music. It's always touched my soul in different ways, you know, like, mm -hmm. just guiding me and kind of being there for you when no one else is type thing. And I feel like once I started listening to 50 Cent and Wu-Tang and Big Pun and Lil Wayne a lot, like, I was just like, like, what is that? What, you know, I was really inspired, but I didn't know how to express myself. And I started just like jotting down verses. Mm -hmm. I would listen to music on my iPod shuffle, just jotting down old verses of like Lil Bow Wow, Lil Wayne, whatever. And then I was like, freestyling in like fifth grade mm -hmm. oh so you guys and, started on like pretty young and like songs by myself just chilling around in town just freestyling and fifth grade it was wild and then i was like oh, maybe i'll start writing my own stuff <laughs> stopped until like seventh grade when i met nobody 47 and me and him used to pass back the notepad you know through past classes and stuff and like just bars back to back to back oh, yeah. and eventually we just started making music together and you know, going from there. Oh, yeah. And like, was anybody in your household musical at all growing up? Or like, did anybody else like around you, like family wise inspire you? Or are you like the first generation of musician? No, I definitely have family that have done music, but no one's super close to me. Okay. Actually, my household, definitely not. Um, my sister, actually, she, you know, she's younger than me, though, but mm -hmm. she's definitely gotten to like keyboard and a little bit. Okay. And, and whatnot but other than that like no um i have distant family in texas and one of my cousins i know was touring for a minute she oh, cool. was a singer spanish singer and um yeah that's all i really know so far you know yeah but so yeah it sounds like you're kind of the the main musician at least yeah, in your I immediate so. household yeah i dig that and it, do, do you think you you inspired your sister at all to do it um i, I wouldn't say so but i mean it could be a possibility okay you know and then we have a couple questions that we check in with everybody on just to kind of keep a tally here. And this first one is one we ask early. It's one we ask often, and it's definitely a crowd favorite. What was the first album you ever bought with your own money? So I've gotten a lot a lot of albums gifted younger mm -hmm. and, you know, presents and whatnot. But the one, the first one I bought was uh, 
Uh, I'm not a human being by Lil Wayne. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. An interesting choice. Yeah. What made you want to go for that one? Lil Wayne's always been one of my favorites and it was a different album. At the time, I think it was like his, one of his newer albums. So mm-hmm. that's probably why. Okay. Hell yeah. I mean, I, I could definitely resonate with that. The first album I ever bought with my own money was uh, The Carter. The Carter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah big fan of that. I could still do the entire intro track from memory. My first tape I ever had was Massacre by 50 Cent. Oh, dope. That shit was wild. Hell yeah. You know, 50 Cent doesn't get, I think, the early credit that he deserves a lot of the time. Like, his music really kind of stood out differently. Oh, yeah. And was... it's, even now, it, you can go back and listen to it, and it has timeless to it. Yeah. Timeless. Hell yeah. And then, uh, what was the first live show you ever went to that was like one you wanted to go to? It was either Futuristic or Lil Wayne. The Lil Wayne versus Drake tour. Yeah. That one was pretty dope. Oh, hell yeah. Um, it was one of those. I can't remember. They were around the same time. Oh, yeah. And I, did, like, did you go yourself? Did you go with other people? Did you like get somebody to take you? Both times, yeah. I went with friends okay. oh, yeah. and family, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then um, before we get into more of the middle portion and talk about what you're doing with music now, do you have a defining moment where you decided you wanted to take music more seriously? A big one I truly remember. Uh, I was at a futuristic uh, concert in Portland, mm-hmm. and he he did his thing where he jumps off stage into the crowd, does a little slam dunk into the little you know basket mm-hmm. as they're holding it up, and he starts crowd surfing. And when he did that, for some reason, everything in my body told me to jump on stage. And I was right there in front. And I was like, "Fuck it!" I just jumped on stage. Oh damn! And then I like looked. I looked at the crowd and realized like, "Whoa." Like, I want to do this, you know? Yeah. This ain't ain't like something that I just dreamt of or like it's a dream, like, or, you know, something I'm chasing, like, it's there. And I knew, like, this is it. No, totally. I mean, being able to see it from that side, too. I mean, I I bet there was a ton of people and it must have been just many people really inspiring to be like, oh, this is what to work towards. And not even four years later, I get on stage with them again and perform my own songs. Hell yeah. So, yeah. It was like a manifestation thing, but also like it was showing me like, hey, you know what I'm saying? This is possible. Yeah. No, I love that. Oh, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and let's dive on into you in the current day. And we're going to get a super easy one out of the way. How'd you pick the name? <laughs> it's not that easy, but um, I'd say mainly just my journey and being the light in the dark, you know, and it's like metaphorically speaking, sun, like the sun, but also like the sun of god you know what i'm saying like i'm not religious but also i do believe there's a higher power and i do believe you know i'm being watched over mm-hmm. like whatever ancestors you know anything like that and i feel like i'm the son of the sun you know like i'm also i try and be the light when you know people are in the dark because i've been in the dark so long so you know just like it means a lot of things it's my journey really just yeah and a bunch of stuff into it like No, I appreciate that for sure. And I mean, I I appreciate that you put a lot of thought into it and it's definitely a unique name. Like it's not hard to remember. It's, it's very easy to like read. It's very easy to spell out and you can do a lot with it. So like, yeah. And I mean, I honestly feel like I'm son Goku, you know, like that's just how I feel. So that's like a a decent reason as well, but mainly like the deeper ones because I was really into like uh, Egyptian culture for for a while, you Mm -hmm. know, and I still am, but like, you know, there's so much in life now that we think about and do. So I'm not like a history. Yeah, I'm looking at all the history and everything. I'm just at this point, just living, trying to be happy and do what I want to do, you know? No, I got you. I dig that for sure. But And then let's go ahead and talk about your writing process. And we're going to break it up into chunks, but we're going to start right at the beginning. So when you get started, you're ready to make music. What are some of the things you do to get a track started? Smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> All right, good, good start for sure. Yeah, it's a good start. Um, it really depends on the day. Mm-hmm. It depends on the beat. Some beats make me want to just close my eyes and I don't write anything. I just lay it down there. I mean, he's he, my homies have been witnesses, you know, people in my group, and I'll just go in there if I feel the beat. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. Or I'll sit there for like, five minutes thinking of words and like, you know, something that makes sense with this context in it, you know, and within 10 minutes, I'll have a whole verse done. So, I mean, it's really like, kind of just depends. If I really feel the beat, I could write really fast or I can just freestyle it. So, 
Yeah. Really, it's just like a feeling. It's not really, I don't plan everything. And when I do, I mean, it turns out great as well, but so many different processes, bro. No, totally. Um, and I mean, like, do you, uh, do you make your own beats? Do you get beats from people you know? Do you buy them online? How do you come across them? I mainly, I mainly still beats on okay. YouTube. Okay. Actually. But I have people oh, wait, in my group. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> but truthfully, um, I have people in my group who make beats. <laughs> I have friends who make beats that I've purchased from them and stuff. I've bought beats, you know, from YouTube and um, all the other places, but I make way too much music. Like you, you definitely have a lot of music. Much. Like I, I was looking on here and um, you have 30 albums that have come out since 2020. Yeah. Like that is, that is the number I can. <laughs> and that's, I count it. That is an actual number. You also are the most mentioned featured artist of all the guests that have been on the show. Yeah. I mean, Lord Lawrence, mm -hmm. featured on uh, collabed with him. Half the people you've been here yeah. the last month. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I like I can't. I was gonna try and make a list of all the people, and I realized just, I would have to watch so many episodes to like figure out a concise list. Yeah, no. Shout out to all of them, though, man. For yeah. Real. Oh yeah. And I mean, like, like I said, you've got a lot of music, and I mean, your most recent track, "Bad for My Soul," which just came out, uh, you know end of last month you know end of march and that had a that had a little mighty on it didn't you little yeah. mighty yeah he was just on yesterday's episode so shout yeah. out little mighty for that mm -hmm. um and i mean it's a solid track i mean it's got heavier guitar in the foundation uh but you know the vocals are a little more driven emotionally yeah but like personally like i like to pick out a track to talk about i have to pick two as my personal choice of your music uh the first one was grow Featuring Edward Bernier, yeah, that was uh, cool. off the album Flying Nimbus, which mm -hmm. I I automatically appreciated because I'm also a fan of Dragon Ball Z. Oh, I love myself. Dragon Ball Z, and uh, I mean, like, I dig the, like the vibrato guitar, the vocal layers all hit on it, and like I tend to lean towards more lax sound, mm. but that's why I had to pick the second one, and that was a piece of my soul. Piece of my soul, yeah. yeah. That was off the album Bright Mind. Mind. Yeah, it was just it was such a vibe, like it just. Even though it wasn't like exactly like a, like your voice as the prominent element, it was really affected. It was really like kind of like you know even on the shorter side of things, mm -hmm. it just everything about that track seemed really perfect. And so I just I uh, I wanted that. to bring that one up. As yeah, that one was really good too. I like that tape. That tape was a good one. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, I ended up listening yeah. through that one twice because it just it had a really cool feel to it. Yeah. But I'm curious to know because you have so much you have so much music. What are some of your favorite songs to perform? So recently I made a song called uh, Vibe With Me mm -hmm. with uh, with Mighty and we performed it twice now. I love performing that. And then uh, Mama Sita is another one that we did recently. Um, Replaces an OG one. Mm -hmm. I have a music video on YouTube. It's on all platforms. Everybody knows if I'm performing, I'm probably going to perform Replace. Yeah. That's one of the bigger ones. And... I really try and keep it fresh. You know, I try and keep it fresh for the most part. Backwood is another famous one with all our friends and mm -hmm. our, you know, our fans and our supporters. They love that one. That one gets hyphy every time. Even if you don't smoke weed, you're still dancing to it because it just, yeah, it's just the vibe. You know, like, oh, yeah. but yeah. I dig that. Uh, do you have like, like, because, you know, you have a, such a large catalog, you could easily never perform the same song twice in like a six month period. Oh, easily. And I guess, you know, with, how much you've been working because you know you're coming on like 10 years as like heavily focused you've been doing it since fifth grade for you know in, in yeah. some capacity in the last year has your process changed at all or have you like solidified that in any way it's just gotten cleaner you know like bruce lee said i'd rather practice one move a thousand times rather than a thousand moves one time yeah you know what i'm saying and I did so much to try and experiment and now I really know my sound. So I feel like I'm confident enough to be like, okay, every time it's going to get better and better and better, you know, yeah, a little bit from everything. Yeah, no, I mean, it just, from what I've heard, you have so many different styles and sounds within your music. Like there's a little bit of something for everybody. It really feels like. And like, I'm no, hate. a lot of people, you know, just switch up a beat Mm -hmm. totally different beat that they're used to and they'll be like oh i'm on something different yeah but like they sound exactly the same which is okay but like i really try to like the beat makes my sound i don't you know like it really no, brings totally. different sounds no and that was like, that was definitely something i noticed is like you have like every time i've heard a feature of you even i'm just like oh that's on tavo like it like it like 
it takes me a second to not like realize it because you know I see it in the name, but like it takes me a second to like acclimate to what sound you're gonna bring to that track. Like, oh, he didn't sound like that last track. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So like, it's cool that you don't. It's cool that you don't like typecast yourself into any one particular sound. Like, I definitely have my sound, but it's like, it's it's not as yeah. Thorough, you know? It's more malleable. Yeah, yeah. You're willing to like adjust it to fit the sound that the track is bringing. Yeah, the like, beat is the biggest part. You know how it makes me feel. Yeah, very much so. And then I guess, you know, uh, like now that we've talked about, you know, your sound pretty in depth, what are some of the things we can look forward to for like new sounds coming out? Like what are you working on and how can you describe kind of like the attributes of your current sound that you're working on? I think the one I'm trying to master right now is my alternative like pop, punk, rock, you Mm -hmm. know. Um, I've been doing it for a while now, since like 2018. It's when I started trying to, you know, put my toes in that water yeah but like um recently i've been like uh i don't like this part three Mm -hmm. my tape that's a big one that i you know used like those genres genre blending you know with that type of alternative rock hip-hop sounds and um i have a tape coming out with a lot of artists such as lil mighty Mm -hmm. um figure eight Mm -hmm. no shout out figure eight um hashi Mm -hmm. And a couple others, and it's like all alternative punk or like alternative rock hip hop type, you know. And uh, I'm really just trying to master that, really. Yes. Yeah. There's something about the guitar, you know, and just heavy. Yeah, totally. Just, I just love that, man. It brings out a different part of me that's like, it's a controlled beast, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And you know, I should have asked this earlier on in the interview, but do you play any instruments? No, none. Okay. I mean, I might, you know, crack a corona or modelo and you give me a guitar out yeah, my thing you'll have some notes but like yeah. it's not your primary like thing. i can freestyle and do it like you know with the acoustic guitar or whatever but mm-hmm. it's not gonna be it's gonna be very unorthodox yeah and you know no i'll that. sound decent yeah but no i don't okay do you have any interest in like picking up an instrument at some point and making it part of your act or are you like yeah. i want to you know i feel like a guitar would be f- so dope like acoustic guitar yeah. honestly but we'll see oh yeah we'll see all right, now that we've talked about kind of all the facets of your music, I want to take a step back and move outwards. Looking at current music of today, like stuff that's coming out right now, what are some of the attributes and like characteristics of music that's happening now that you enjoy? I like the artists, and it doesn't matter locally. Globally. Yeah, just music in general. I like that uh, artists are trying to start collabing with each other much more mm-hmm. because usually you have your little circle or the artists that you want on your song because you think they're the greatest or they sound the best. But now, like, people are starting to really open themselves up to different sounds and different collabs and people, you know, networking with different people. So, like, I like seeing that. Like, I'm I'm weird where I, like, I look at artists and I can, I just have this really good ear. I'm like, oh, that that artist will sound good on this beat Mm -hmm. featuring that artist. Yeah. Like, I like, I like mixing, matching, and just, I think like that all the time. No, I totally. Feel like when I see artists do it on their own without me being like, "Hey, you guys would be dope on this beat," and they do it, I'm like, mm-hmm. "Oh yes, I knew it." Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I could do that for sure. Like that you're uh, you're like a less obnoxious DJ Khaled. Guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because he made a whole career off of that concept. No, but no, I yeah. I agree with you fully. I think seeing music happen the way it is right now with a lot of people like teaming up or like making sounds that either they wouldn't be on or like sounds that didn't exist before they got mm-hmm. together. I think that that's just kind of where music needs to move in general. So I can appreciate that for sure. Now, this next question is the last one in the middle portion. But before we move on, it's definitely the densest question in the interview. But we've talked a lot about, you know, your experiences with music, your actions or reactions, things like that. But when it's just you and the music one-on-one, what does music give back to you? It gives everything to me, man. Like, for a long time, I was, like, whether physically or mentally alone, you know, Mm -hmm. emotionally, whatever the case is, music was always there. Like... I'd put in my headphones and I'd be walking in the rain. It was there, you know, it made me feel a little bit better about my situation. Yeah. You know, and just hearing messages from certain artists and mm-hmm. kind of like helping me find myself in a sense. So it's really given me a lot, like my whole life, honestly. I have a tattoo of Mormon that says, Music is my religion. 
Hell yeah. You know, so it's a Jimi Hendrix co- uh, quote. Yeah. Oh, hey. Uh, yeah. You can't see it off screen, but there's definitely, uh, definitely a picture of him up there. Yes, sir. Rest in peace. But um, yeah, man. So it's, it really is everything to me for sure. No, I appreciate that. And like I said, just, you know, commenting back on just how much of it you've done in, in, you know, in a window of time and how many people you've worked with. And like, yeah. like really before we move into the hypothetical questions, just the way everybody talks about your presence when they're doing music with you, it's, it definitely leaves something to like what you've said about yourself, you know, like trying to be the bright space in, in music for people and like yeah. letting, like letting yourself live through it. So just, this is a moment where I'll, I'll give you your flowers on behalf of what everybody else has said. It it's just from hearing your answers. I think it's really cool to, to like get to know you in this moment and understand why everybody says that now. Cause it makes sense you know, within the, you know, the few minutes that we've been talking already. Yeah. So I just, I really appreciate that. And I appreciate you sharing. I got love for all of them too. They know that, you know, oh, yeah. it's all genuine and, and really they're there for me is just as much as I am for them, you know, like yeah. without them, I don't know where I'd be mentally or like, you know, with my music, because a lot of them, obviously I'm collabing with them for a reason. Mm-hmm. I don't make music with people that I don't like, or yeah. I don't like their sound, you know, like obviously there's, a genuine connection you know, with all these people and hopefully I have touched their hearts or their, you know, their minds somehow. Yeah, they've done the same to me as well, you know, like oh, yeah. we're oh, a village yeah. out here, man. We gotta, we gotta help each other and build up. Very much so. You know? And with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the hypothetical questions. And for these sky's the limits, the questions are all made up. So the answers are allowed to be as well. Um, but this first one's pretty straightforward. If you could work with any one person, the only requirement is they have to be alive, but it can be anybody. Oh. Who would you want to work with? I don't want to say Lil Wayne because that's so easy to say. So, I mean, Akon. Okay. Yeah, Akon for sure. Okay, interesting that's answer. A that's a big one for sure. Yeah. I, need, yeah. A, I need a hook. <laughs> Fair. I need a hook. Fair. Yeah, and if anybody could give you one, it would be Akon for sure. I need a hook from Akon. Hell yeah. That's for sure. And then subsequently, yeah. usually I ask now, who's a local artist that you're aware of that you haven't gotten to connect with yet, but you would like to? And I'm really curious to know who you haven't worked with yet and who you would like to work there's with. There's a lot of artists um, in general. So there's a lot I haven't worked with, but I've worked with a lot. But um, so who I, I'd say probably, I mean, he's the bro, but like I haven't worked with him yet. We've definitely talked about it, but I say Mighty, like uh, it's Mighty mm-hmm. um, from Portland. Okay. Yeah, he's... He's an OG. He's definitely gave me some opportunities that I'm grateful for. And, you know, we've talked about music and stuff in the past, but he's doing so much right now. And yeah. it's crazy. And I'm over here trying to figure out my life and what I'm doing in my lane. So, you know, Fair. I feel like those paths will cross. But, yeah, he's definitely someone I really want to work with locally for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, everybody, you know what to do. Add him in the comments. Let's see if we can make that happen. And then for this next one, like I said before, sky's the limits. And it's pretty literal in this sense. But if you could perform anywhere in the world and you wouldn't have to worry about crowd access or building stability or power, it's guaranteed the best lineup, guaranteed the best show. And it doesn't have to be a venue. It can be, it can be anywhere and it'll work in this case. Where would you want to perform? Japan. Okay. I say Japan. Oh, yeah. Do you have like a place in mind or just like you just want to kind of hit everywhere in Japan? Tokyo's fun. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big Dragon Ball Z fan and I feel like their culture over there, they get super hype. Yeah. You know, and they're like, I feel like I would have at least a few sounds out of all my songs that they would vibe to. And oh, I got to bring out the Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. And say, I will. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't care. But yeah, I feel like that would just be really hype. I feel like the energy will just be on, you know? Yeah. So that'd yeah. be fun. But other than that, I'd say Mexico, obviously, because, you know, I'm yeah. Mexican. I want to go do that for my people and my culture for sure and feel that, you know, energy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I dig that. All right. And then to wrap up the hypothetical questions, if you could get one more album from anybody, they could be alive, they could be dead, they could have not put out an album in 100 years, they could have put out an album yesterday, who would you want an album from? Triple X. Okay. Hell yeah. Yeah. Man, that's an answer I wish I got a little more often, honestly. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. I need one more from him. Yeah. He was way too young and just barely showing us what he had yeah you know what I'm saying yeah there was so much potential for what that what his sound would have become for sure right now i couldn't even imagine no oh, 
Oh, man. people all the time, like, I just need a song with him and Mac Miller so bad in my ears. Like, that would just be... Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's a super solid answer. All right. And with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start wrapping this up. What can we look forward to between, let's say, now and October? More music videos, handful of shows, hopefully getting this album finished for the group, mm-hmm. the Goonies. I have so many collabs and individual, you know, tapes and uh, stuff I'm working on. But the group tape is like the biggest thing I've been working on for three years so far. Oh, hell yeah. First album on all platforms. I'm trying to make sure every song is, you know what I'm saying, just perfect. I'm going to have artists on there like Heaven Sent. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out Heaven Momentum. Yeah. Oh, shout out Momentum. West Coast Black Bear. Mm-hmm. That's the brother. Um, so far, we got a Fish Gang. Mm-hmm. So figure eight and some of his his people. And we got Swiggle Mandela and Cold oh, yeah. Boy, the Golden Child. Yeah, that was Swiggle Mandela. Yeah. Bunch of bunch of artists around here, you know, that we connect with and we've had genuine um connections with over the years that we've been doing this. Yeah. As a group. Damn, definitely looking forward to that. Yeah. For this next one, go ahead and look straight at the camera and tell everybody how they can find you. You can find me on Instagram at Santavo.official. You could find me on Spotify as Santavo, S-O-N, asterisk symbol, T-A-V-O, no spaces. Uh, I'm on all platforms. Third Eye Goonies, not official on Instagram. Yeah, I mean, or catch me at the show on the 26th, April 26th. Yes, this month. It's my birthday. Lil Mighty, Brady, A Alex. Uh, Third Eye Goonies, we're all in the building, you know? So, oh, yeah. Yeah, y'all definitely heard about that on yesterday's episode as well. So now it's three days to go until that show. Definitely be there. And happy early birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Now, with that, that being said, uh, any other uh, any other plugs, any other shout outs, anybody else you want to put on while you're on here? I mean, you, you've already done a pretty hefty list. So, yeah, man. Shout out Bishop Brown. Nobody 47 oh, yeah, is my brother Brown. forever, man. As soon as nobody gets back here, he's going to have to get on. Yeah, for sure. Deal. For sure. My bro. Definitely man. got a guaranteed spot. I started this whole thing with him, so it's beautiful to see where we're at now, you know. Um, yeah, Bishop, nobody. Shout out No C. Shout out No C. You know what I'm saying? Um, momentum, obviously. Everybody that we've been shouting out all day. All the Goonies. All my Goonies. Indo Slim. Oh, Big Butter. Slim. Man. There's so many people, it's it's ridiculous. Shout out all y'all. I love you all. Like, all y'all. Oh, yeah. Every single one of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, and we're back to wrap things up. Before we do, uh, I got to do the quick shout out. So as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. Brothers Apothecary, you already know how it is. Uh, and with that being said, the final question. And this is entirely up to your interpretation. But what is an album you feel is more on the obscure side? So it's one not a lot of people would know, but it's one you think everybody should know. So when we're talking generations, I feel like not a lot of people have done their history, you know, mm-hmm. the research of mm-hmm. the history of hip hop and a lot of albums. So I'd say, I'd have to say Massacre, 50 Cent. Okay. Hell yeah. I was saying, you know, that's my first tape I ever had, my CD. And. I feel like there's a lot of songs in there that haven't been highlighted or bulleted. Obviously, you got, you know, Candy Shop, Just a Little Bit, yeah. and Disco Inferno. And like, those are really big songs or, you know, whatnot. But um, there's some songs in there that need to be recognized for sure. And and I definitely would say the Carter 1 and Carter 2. Oh, yeah. For sure. No, I mean, those are those are three super solid albums. And And, you know, the more I think about it, the more you're right, like, there was a whole generation that grew up on the massacre, but it yeah. came out so like I remember when it came out, but I'm pretty sure if I asked a bunch of people now, they would not have yeah. ever heard anything off of it other than like the two that play in the club. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, so that's a super solid wreck. Thank you so much for recommending those. Hey. All right. But we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Do you thank you so much for joining us? Thank you guys for having me again. Santavo out here, third eye goonies, you know what it is. Yeah. This has been another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box, and we're signing off. Later, y'all. That's a wrap. This is not a podcast. This is a show.
keep jamming.